Ladies and gentlemen, boys and ghouls, step right up. Behind this curtain lies a ghastly concoction of delight, horror, fantasy, and terror. Your every wish is our command, your every whimsical desire brought to life. But I'm warning you, there's always a price. Welcome to the greatest show on earth! Dark Carnival is in town, you'd better be ready Just follow the parade of dancing skeletons Full of ghoulish delight around every corner Don't tell your parents you're here, they will soon be mourners Welcome to the lower bird, the greatest show on earth We appear without a sound, the darkest show around We will be here in a day, madness murders is made Disappear at night with blood upon the concrete I will be your ticket taker Come inside, it's a dream Enter the fun house of beers No one can hear you scream We can supply anything That your heart desires But the consequences Will surely be dire Welcome to the lower birth Show on earth, we appear without a sound. The darkest show around, we will leave you in a daze. Madness, murder, dismay, we will disappear at night with blood upon the concrete. Come inside for the ride, your deepest, darkest fears The best night of your life, you're never leaving here The unknown, the unseen is what you're gonna find Witness this, witness that, until you lose your mind Welcome to the lower bird, the greatest show on earth. We appear without a sound, the darkest show around. We will be here in a day, madness, murder, dismay. We will disappear at night with blood upon the concrete. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the To Be Continued podcast. Let's get the call going with my good friend and co-host, Rick. Although, oh, that's different. Okay, that was weird. I didn't expect to see those. Um, that would explain a few things, though. Um, excuse me a second. Don't need the display right now. Hey, hold up. I apologize, the cat is jumping around on furniture that he is not supposed to be on. All right, there we go. Now, let's get it started. Hello? There, did you get rid of those weird phantoms that appeared on our screen? Um, I thought I did, but they're back. And we're getting they zero are. kilobytes per second. That's interesting. Hmm. Ooh. I'm not sure what's going on here. 
I'm going to run a really? scan on my computer later today. Um, I might have to run Tron again. That would be interesting. Oh, boy. Yeah, yeah, because this is very, very unusual behavior, and it started today. And um, I tried to download a ROM for Dragon Quest Seven for the 3DS, and um, I think the 3DS might just be fucking cursed at this point. If this is what's happening every fucking time, every fucking time I try to do something with the 3DS emulator on computer, <laughs> when will I fucking learn? <laughs> what, what emulator are you using for 3DS? Citra. Citra is supposed to be safe. But, um, oh, well, the weird gear symbols are gone. I cannot see you, though. Huh? Oh, I'm a ghost! Woo. You are the invisible man! Um, hmm. And we are losing kilobytes. Okay, you know what? We are, we are having some technical difficulties here. Um, the plan was to talk about childhood fears, but considering the odd behavior that's going on, um, yeah, I don't know. Oh, and they're back now, too. Okay, yeah, this is weird <laughs> as shit. Dude, this is the most cursed stream we've done since, like, ever. Yeah, this is definitely the most scuffed stream we've had in a very long time. Um, I'm going to... I'm not really sure how to handle this right now, actually. I'm just gonna turn off the PNGs, and we're gonna we're gonna do this old school. We're gonna capture the Discord display. Okay. Uh, Let me know when they can see this. Yeah, yeah. Just a second. There's the footage. Okay. Now we set the capture to. Not that. Um. There we go, and let's just do this. Um, edit transform. And close. Okay, there we go. Everything seems to be in order now. Perfecto. Alright, so, childhood fears. Um... Yeah, the original plan for this episode was actually going to be ra ranking horror movies, but I remembered that you actually don't watch horror movies. So, mm -hmm. what were some things that you were afraid of as a kid? The earliest fear I can recall is the dark. Yeah, I think that's one we've all had. Um, that was definitely one of my big ones, too. Yeah, specifically, I was so petrified in the dark, I thought there was some kind of demon or monster in there that would, like, kill me if I stayed in there for too long, so I always try to leave the light on. But if I had to be in the position where I had to turn off the light to go somewhere, I would turn off and then run as fast as I can to get to the light. Yeah. Like, I would have to, like, turn off the light in one room, and then turn off the light in one place to go to the other room quickly to get in the light. You know what's really funny? My fear of the dark went away, then came back, then went away again. Um, when I was, like, I was afraid of the dark when I was, um, actually, I, I guess I didn't really go away. I just had a different approach to trying and dealing with it, and it didn't really work. Um, when I was, so when I was, like, maybe five or six um, have you ever played the Pajama Sam computer games? I have not, actually. Okay, the very first one that ever came out was, like, I think for Windows 95, and it was called No Need to Hide When It's Dark Outside, and it's basically all about this kid named Sam, um, who, who is a, who pretends he's the superhero Pajama Man, um, which is probably the most absurd superhero name I have ever heard. And, um... He basically goes into his closet to try and confront his fear of the dark. And the whole game, the whole first game is, from there is his... Is basically what's going on through his imagination. You have to find your flashlight, your lunchbox, your mask, and, um... Yeah, because all those things he goes in there with... 
because the plan is he's going to trap darkness in his lunchbox after weakening it, weakening it with his flashlight. And um, the the, fla- the three key items get taken from by from him by trees, and um, you have to get that back by solving like logic puzzles throughout the world. Um, some run- and the cool thing is where the items are and the puzzles are slightly randomized. Meaning that one playthrough you could get one set of puzzles, and then another playthrough you could get a completely different set of puzzles. Ooh, I like those kinds of games. Yeah. Um, if you've played a point-and-click adventure game, it's very much like that. Except point of, except the Pajama Sam uh, games don't have that problem where you have to come up with absolute nonsense solutions to puzzles. There's no slapping of a fish with a cricket bat so that it'll sing a tune to put a robot to sleep. Nothing absurd like that, no. It's very straightforward, <laughs> makes sense. Um, it, there's, a, there's, one, there's a chance that your lunchbox could be on the other side of some thorns that are gigantic that you can't crawl through. So the solution is to get some oars for a rowboat, go to, go to the underground river, and then basically ride the bucket that's being drawn by the well to get to the other side of that area. Or in another example, um, you said you might find your flashlight in the mines at the top of a really large structure. Your solution is to get an oil can for the um, mine cart so that you can use the mine cart to travel down the rails to get your flashlight. Um, and that game taught me that I did that maybe I should try being friends with the dark. And so I had like when I was like, the first night after playing that game, I tried to imagine that the dark was the um, darkness from the. Damn it, cat! Fucking shit! The cat just just like um, tried to jump onto the headphones and ripped my headset off of my head. I apologize That's for that. Just- Nah, you're good. That was actually kind of funny, though, for a sec. But yeah, um, because in the game, Darkness is actually more scared of Sam than he is of it. He's when um when he asks Sam what he's doing in his house, Sam's like, "I'm gonna capture you and put this in this lunchbox." And Darkness is like, "That doesn't sound very fun." And he sounds like he's voiced by Satchmo of all people. <laughs> and they end up, um, and the two end up making friends at the end and playing cheese and crackers, which is basically just a permutation of tic tac toe. So it's like, you know that old solution of if you're afraid of something that's like, well, have you tried talking to it? Have you tried asking it to leave you alone? <laughs> or like, well, that solution is usually the solution people give to bullying. It's like, have you tried asking him to stop? And, you know, usually people will be like, no, I actually haven't tried that. Yeah, I actually tried that, and um, it kind of worked for a while. But then I'm like, nope, dark is still scary. <laughs> um, kids are very imaginative. So, you know, you, you're very superstitious as a kid. And I think like you, yeah, I believed that there was something demonic about the dark. Um, when I was like maybe three... I remember believing that at midnight, that's when all the ghosts would come out. Um, and that scared the shit out of me, so I always wanted to be asleep before midnight. I made it a fucking mission. Really? Yeah. I have so many kids through myself who would fight to stay up as long as possible, and their parents like, no, you go to bed early. They would have been like 6 p.m. Yeah. And the weird thing about that belief is that I had no... Nobody had ever told me about the superstition of the witching hour or anything like that. That is just something that I believed out of fucking nowhere. It was the weirdest thing ever. Funny enough, though, you know what did help me get over my fear of the fear of the dark? What's that? So I would have been maybe 11 or 12 at the time. I was in middle school, and I was reading the Star Wars books, The Last of the Jedi. Not to be confused with that god-awful movie, The Last Jedi. Um, this was, like, years before Disney bought the franchise, so they could get away with making titles like that. Um, but... There's this character named Ferris Olin, and he, ha- he actually left the Order. He walked away. Um, and that's how he ended up surviving Order 66. But he continued to, um... Oh god, what was it? Basically, he runs into Obi-Wan again some months after the events of Revenge of the Sith. 
And Obi-Wan is like, oh shit, wait a minute, there's records of Luke and Leia being born, I gotta fucking wipe these before the Empire finds these, that could be serious trouble. And he runs into Ferris and is like, Ferris, I need, to ha I need your help with this. And Ferris is like, Obi-Wan, I'm not a Jedi anymore. And Obi-Wan basically tell, um, Obi-Wan actually talks him into starting, uh, starting up with the Force again. And as one of his first trials, Ferris goes to a cave where he has to build, or no, he has to acquire crystals for a lightsaber. He gets a hilt that's basically dead and empty from a dying Jedi who was wounded on um, the planet that they were on at the time. And during Ferris's trial to get the crystals to make his own lightsaber from the um, bequeathed hilt, he has a realization that he sees a force vision of Vader and senses this immense dark side presence in the cave as he's trying to complete his trial. But he has this realization that if the dark side is present, the light side is also there too. And that was actually p what led me to stop being afraid of the dark. Is it's like, yeah, if the dark is there, even if demons are there, that means God is there too. Ooh, that's a nice way to put it. Yeah. It's absolutely true. Yeah, because it's a... Um, and, um, but one of my other childhood fears was being alone. I don't know why this happened, but when I was alone for too long in a room, I could feel this sensation of something following behind, like, as if so, I would feel like I was being followed by something, and it creeped me the fuck out. Um, I would book it out of rooms that were empty because of that. And, um, that never, I don't really know how, what, what happened with that. Yeah, that sounds kind of the, the odd, though. I know in my case, I was actually afraid of being in, like, really crowded spaces. Like, if there was too many people in a room, I would just, like, get out of there as soon as possible. That's why, part of the reason why I don't go to, like, massive concerts, because, like, everyone's, like, stuffed in a tiny box. Especially in the box, everyone's so stuffed, I don't like that. And also, I was to a lot of modern pop music, so I wouldn't have a reason to go. And also, uh, tickets are ridiculously expensive. And also, now I have to buy through Ticketmaster, which is kind of jank. And so, you know why that is, though, right? The reason oh, yeah. concert tickets are so expensive is because the artists actually make most of their money from concert tickets. They don't see that. I think they see like maybe ten percent of the profits from an album sale. Well, oh, I can see why because people don't buy albums anymore. They just listened off of Spotify. Yeah, um, and they don't make that much Spotify, money from that, that from from streaming sites either. Believe it or not. No, like with music, I know that with music, I think it's like a quarter or a fifth of a cent. I can't remember what, but those are ridiculously low rates per minute. I don't remember what the rate was, but it's stupid low. I remember that. Yeah, I honestly feel bad for anyone who's trying to be a successful music artist in this day and age. It's not something that you can do um, and make a ton of money off of, unfortunately. Unless you're already like a triple A star, like Taylor Swift. Right, and that comes with its own problems. You know, like it's kind of an unspoken rule: the kind of shit you have to do to get there. Mm -hmm. Um, and then spiders. That's another one that just I fucking hate spiders. Um, even as an adult, I'm like, yeah, I'm I'm going to tr be extremely cautious around spiders. As a kid, I wasn't at my, and the interesting thing about the fear of spiders, I actually wasn't terribly afraid of spiders until, um, an incident that occurred while I was camping. I was going out, I, w I was attending this Christian youth camp, um, I'd gone, like, one year before that, and I think I would continue to go two more years, and there, I went into a cabin with my group and a counselor, and for the life of me, I cannot remember what we were doing there. It wasn't our cabin where we bunked. Um, I'm trying to remember if there was, like, some sort of hike we were doing. Well, details, I guess, don't really matter like that. Um, but what ended up happening is there was this... I felt this crawling sensation on my neck. I'm like, that's weird, and I just flick whatever's crawling on me. Um, this fat 
this this huge fuck off fat spider. Um, I, I, um, I turn around and I see that spider on the floor, and I just start stomping over and over again. I'm like, ah, die, die, die! And then I just run out of there. Um, the counselor actually had to go and get me because of that. Like, I had to, like, grab me and stop me from running off because of that. Um, but from that day forward, I fucking hated spiders. <laughs> Um, ah, interesting. Yeah, and I think that's in part due to the fact that the su um, earlier that summer I'd actually gone to visit my cousins, and my cousin Colton was what, um, or someone in his house, could have been my aunt or his older sisters, um, were watching the horror movie Tarantula. And I'm like, wait, there's poisonous spiders, and spiders can look like that? And I was just scared witless by that. <laughs> yeah, I would imagine seeing a movie of that scale would instill some fear in anything. That'd be like if you show cocaine bear to a seven-year-old. Cocaine bear? <laughs> that sounds hysterical. Yeah, you don't- uh, yeah, it actually came out back in February. I was actually gonna see it just for ha but I just never got around to it. Mm. I heard it wasn't very good. It wouldn't surprise me. It's literally about a bear in Tennessee who gets snored off on cocaine. I don't know how pretty you can get from there. I mean, it do it sounds funny, but I imagine it's probably like one. It's uh, it's probably trying to do the Jaws formula, where you got this animal that's just like stupid, strong, and dangerous, that's just massacring everyone. Hmm. Until somebody goes and hunts it down. And also, I was like, is it just me or did it get some comedy vibes in the trailer? Like, I feel like it's supposed to be a horror movie, but it comes to more like a horror comedy. Mm -hmm. And I don't know how well that works these days and age. It can work. You ever see the movie Young Frankenstein? No, actually. Oh my god, that movie is hysterical. It stars Gene Wilder, and um, it's basically a parody of the old Frankenstein movies. Um, yeah, and it does sound really fun. You know what's funny about Gene Wilder? I, I was thinking um, about like missed opportunities, like missed casting potentials. There's two things that I felt like if it had happened would have been awesome. The first was Jim Carrey as Plastic Man. Oh, that would have been funny as hell. I mean, you saw him in The Mask, so he, he was great. Imagine if he became Plastic Man for just a movie. It would have been great, especially him in his prime. Man, what was, I, I just think we do be, do better as Plastic Man than the Riddler. Yeah. Although he's been fucking outstanding as Doctor Eggman from the for the uh, Sonic movies. Yeah, too bad he retired after the second movie. Oh, he did. That's yeah, a bummer. Uh, after that, he said he said he was done with acting. He might come if they pay him high enough. He might come back for a third one, but that's about it. Well, at least he went out on a high note. That's true. That's true. And Sonic's franchise did redeem his acting career because prior to Sonic, he wasn't really going anywhere. Well, he just he just disappeared after Bruce Almighty. Oh my God, that long? That was in the early two thousands. I know. It? I can't think of anything that he was in after Bruce Almighty. And I would have known. Oh, wait, no, you know what? I take that back. He was Count Olaf wait in a, a series of unfortunate events. But that oh. was, like, maybe a couple years after Bruce Almighty. I forgot about those movies. Well, I mean, to be fair, only one was made when there was supposed to be a several. It didn't do well enough at the box office to warrant a second or third film. I think the original plan was that they were going to do all the books as they were released. Or every, like, oh. third one that was released. Because I think, don't quote me on this though, there's like 12 in total, so it would have been like a... You would have gotten 1 through 3 in the first movie, which we got. Then you would have gotten 4 through uh, 6 in the second movie. And then you would have gotten... Oh, so... Oh, wow, that would have been a quadrilogy instead. Never mind. I was going to do like 4 books of film. Well, uh, the thing is, the first movie only had the first 3 books in it. Fair enough. Okay, that makes sense. But yeah, I remember um, the, him being really funny in um, Series of Unfortunate Events, 
but I think that because it did so, and I, I, granted, I've only ever seen it once. I just remember it's like it's Jim Carrey; he's fucking hysterical. Um, but I vaguely remember people saying he didn't do very well in that movie. But then again, the whole movie didn't do very well. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what was I gonna say? Yes, and the other miscasting potential I think would have been really great is Gene Wild, Gene Wilder as Mr. Mix's Spitler. I'm not familiar with that uh, with that character. He is an old school Superman villain who comes from the fifth dimension. His whole snake is that he comes from reality where he can do whatever he wants, and his whole thing is just to mess with Superman using his powers. Like he'll turn people into animals. He'll just turn to random objects. He'll cause random stuff to fall from the sky. It's hysterical. Um, oh. I've been recently watching clips from Superman the Animated Series where he was actually played by a voice by Jeffrey Godfrey, of all people. And he was phenomenal. Jeffrey Godfrey. Is that any relation to Gilbert Godfrey? I think that... Oh, I think it was Gilbert. Yes, that was the guy who played my bad. Okay. Yeah, the, the guy, it's the same guy who played the parrot in Aladdin. Yeah, that's Gilbert Godfrey. Which, you know, yes, whenever I hear true. that name, I immediately think of the parrot Iago. That's what, that's what I was saying. That, that's what I meant. Um, but yeah, I think um, specifically for like the Christopher Reeve era of Superman films, if they had done a third or fourth movie with like Mr. and Mrs. Straight, like is either the main villain or one of the villains, I think it would be really cool. And cast Gene Wilder in the role, I think he would have killed it if given the chance. You know, you know what's really funny? Um, I would have loved to have seen Gene Wilder as uh, Doctor Who. Unfortunately, we never got that. Why? Because he's an American? Well, we got one American actor to play the Doctor. Um, I actually based... Who? Um, Peter, Peter Cushing. Yeah, Grand Moff Tarkin is, a ver- is an incarnation of Doctor Who. Not an official one, mind you, but he is... He's, um, his incarnation has been... Um, had nods made to him by the official show. Isn't Peter Cushing a British actor? Is he? Oh, you know what? He might be. I'm about to say, I'm like, nah, I'm pretty sure he's British too. <laughs> oh, I remember. Okay, here's why. I, uh, here's the confusion. Um, that the, he was the doctor for a Doctor Who movie that was produced by an American studio. So that's why I was misremembering. Right, yeah, that was the eighth Doctor, right? Uh, no, different, um, uh, different one. Um, I mean, yes, an American student. Actually, no. Who was that? Wasn't the eighth Doctor in like a one-off movie? He was. Yes, he was. And the movie was uh, made by either an American or Canadian studio. I'm trying to remember. That movie went through production hell. Um, the script got rewritten, I think, five times. Holy crap. Yeah, it's almost as uh, crazy as the Mario movie uh, from the 90s. Funny enough, did you know that um, Tim Curry was almost the 8th Doctor? I am escaping to the one place that has not been corrupted by capitalism. Space! (laughs) (laughs) You know what's even crazier though? Tim Curry was almost the Joker. Oh, that would have been awesome. Yeah, he almost got the role in the animated series, but at some point he decided to go with Mark Hamill instead. I'm not entirely sure why that change was made, though. Even Kevin Conroy was shocked when he heard that. I'm like, wait, I thought Tim was going to be the Joker. What's going on? Uh, well, the reason that Tim Curry was not the Doctor was because he was busy with another movie at the time. Um, but no, the Peter Cushing Doctor Who um, was also made by an American studio, and they basically did a movie adaptation of the Doctor Who... Uh, the first Doctor story is where the Doctor, Ian, Barbara, and Susan go to Scarrow and meet the Daleks for the first time, and then the follow-up episode where the Earth gets invaded. And, um, you know, Peter Cushing actually does an alright job of it. Um, don't, don't try and, like, ra- don't try and fit it in with the continuity or you'll give yourself an aneurysm, though. There's, if you're, if you're a continuity snob like me, you'll get, just treat it as its own thing. <laughs> Um, 
but this should give you an idea of of um, how off the wall it was. It didn't even use the Doctor Who theme when uh, in the opening credits or the closing credits. And yeah, um, the Doctor isn't a Time Lord. He built the TARDIS out of a shed in his backyard. <laughs> That's <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's 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 a very. I think the reason for this is back when this was made, they didn't actually ha know if the Doctor was a human or an alien. It wasn't established yet, and um, there was there wasn't really a set um, rules for for the lore going on. Um, so they kind of just had to uh, improvise. Mm. Actually. Um... I never figured out. So it's reason in the movie. It turns out it's actually made in a collaboration with both Universal and BBC. And the movie, the, the TV one from 1996, was actually supposed to be the first attempt to reboot the Doctor Who series after it was originally cancelled in 1989. And after the movie, they were going to do an American-produced TV series that would have aired on an American network. But yeah. while the, it was popular enough in the UK, it didn't do as well in the United States, and so the TV show never happened. As a result, what ended up happening was the show would get rebooted but in 2005 on BBC proper. Right, and, and it's probably the for the proper. best because I've actually seen um, the episode list and the uh, and the series Bible that they were going to use if they rebooted it on a U.S. network. And, oh man, it is cringe. Um, oh, what, what was the plan? Okay, so the Doctor and the Master are not brothers um, in, the, in the series, but they were going to be in the American reboot. The Cybermen, which are basically the Borg, but kind of different with their own flavor to it, um, would have been turned into space pirates and just regular old robots. Um, Daleks would have gone from tanks that are driven by race purist mutants to just giant weird spider robots with brains in them, almost like the spider robots from Star Wars, come to think of it. Um... And the oh, those guys? yeah, and the Doctor and Master would be looking for their great grandfather or their father, a Time Lord explorer named Ulysses, and it was going to be revealed that the Doctor was a descendant of Rassilon. Imagine, Ooh. Rassilon is basically the founding father of Gallifrey. The lore behind him is incredibly complicated. Because G Rassilon in the lore is basically King Arthur, Adolf Hitler, and the and George Washington, with a little bit of Jesus thrown in there for extra flavor. Because um, before Rass, he's the reason that the Time Lords became Time Lords. He's he an Omega. Um, basically created time travel. They threw uh, I don't know. They they harnessed a black hole to power the the Tardises. And it's kept on Gallifrey throughout most of the classic series. Um, that was uh, one of the lore snares in the movie that people really did not like because um, the movie actually changed it so that the Eye of Harmony was inside of each TARDIS. But imagine, yeah. But imagine, imagine the absolute aneurysm that people would have had if it turned out that the Doctor was related to Rassilon as a descendant. Like, imagine if you find out you're the descendant of Jesus Christ and Adolf Hitler at the same time. Like, it's... It's just weird. The, 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 US, the U.S. authors for the series reboot that would have happened had, like, no fucking idea what they were doing. Now they were just making their own show inside that Doctor Who name on it. Pretty much. Actually, come to think of it, a very apt comparison would be Disney Star Wars, where they take the property, gut what made it it, and are just using it as a skin for their own ideas, essentially. I mean, at that point, it'd be easier just to do your own thing and sell that. Yeah, exactly. But then again, I probably wouldn't do it. They probably wouldn't do it, so it would. Nope. If it was his own thing. So yeah, all I can say is, uh, thank God that the TV movie aired at the same time as that one sitcom drama season finale. Because that's where everyone's eyes were on, that's what everyone's attention was on when the, when the movie Seinfeld aired. Seinfeld or Friends? Neither. Was it Seinfeld or Friends? Neither. It was some, um, Seinfeld was too early, it was, uh, this was pre-Seinfeld. This might have been pre-Friends, actually. Um. Really? Yeah. 
someone who's even more of a Doctor Who nerd than me would probably be able to tell you um, what that ne- what what show it was. Um, I think it's actually mentioned on the di- on the uh, DVD s- uh, special features because there's a making of segment on that thing. Um, I I I'll, I might rewatch it again later tonight. All right. Um, but yeah, hmm, we got, we, we've got way sidetracked. Um, this was supposed yeah. to be, uh, childhood fears. Uh, what else we got here? All right, I got another one. Just, uh, let me, I got, let me think for another moment. I'll be right there. All right. Yeah. Cause let me think, I've gone, I've done The Dark, Spiders, um, Alone. Oh, vampires. I had horrific nightmares about vampires when I was a kid. Um, reoccurring nightmares where it, it was just awful. That's why, um, that's partly why I like Castlevania. Uh, I have such a love for Castlevania. Because I basically am just beating the shit out of my childhood boogeyman in that game. <laughs> One of the most vivid nightmares I remember about vampires is I was walking on a very long bridge um, with a bottomless pit underneath me, and it was the it was pitch black at night. The moon was out, but it wasn't providing any light around. I could see a castle on the other side of the bridge, and I was trying to get to the castle. And as I'm walking across this bridge, I could um, these vampires came up from the pit. And started, like, feeding on me. It was... That was one of the most, like, horrific nightmares I had as a little kid. I wonder if Rick's AFK. I think he's... I think he said he'd be right back. Well, um... I see we have two people viewing the stream. Thank you all for joining us. Um... If anyone's watching this on YouTube, feel free to go ahead and type your childhood fears in the comments. Um, if you want to, share how you got over them or how you dealt with them. Um, what else have we got to talk about until Rick gets back? What do we do now? Oh, we're losing signal. Oh, no, it's back. Rick, you, uh, you good? Hello? I'm, uh, I hope he's alright. Oh, there you are! Sorry to keep you waiting, complicated business. Uh, for some reason, my dad uh, forgot to throw out the pizza box. I had to go and do that. But I'm back now. So let's get rolling. Um, I think another... What's there a fear I had? Uh... Oh, you know what a fear I had? was this, um, silence. Like, for a silence for an extended period of time, 
Like things require for too long, I would just start to like freak out and I would just play something like music or make noise or something. Because I just really? did not like the sound of silence. Yeah. Why? It was a real problem when I was really young. I don't know, I guess when I was younger, it was kind of weird. Because on the one hand, if something was too loud, my ears would hurt. But if there wasn't any noise, I would freak out. I had to have some level of sound at all times. It was very strange, but I kind of grew out of that once I got to like early elementary school. That was more of like a preschool thing. Yeah, that's that's an interesting fear. When you were gone, I was just telling, recounting um, to the viewers how my child, one of my other childhood fears was vampires. Um, I actually Ooh. recounted a very uh, a night a common nightmare that I would have. Um, what ended up happening? So yeah, I guess I'll tell you too. Um, there was this nightmare I would have where I would be walking across a long bridge and there'd be a castle in the distance. It would be pitch black. The moon and stars would be present, but they wouldn't provide any light. Um, and I'd be, and this bridge would be over a bottomless pit. And um, usually like halfway across the bridge, uh, a bunch of vampires would fly up from the pit and start feeding on me. And um, yeah, it was like one of the most horrific reoccurring nightmares I would have. Um, that's partly why I love Castlevania so much, because I am basically beating the absolute shit out of my childhood boogeyman. <laughs> I would imagine why that would appeal to someone like you. Yeah. <laughs> um. You know what else freaked me out, though? And I didn't remember this one. Apparently, I was afraid of the Power Rangers. What the fuck? Yup. Okay, being but afraid of some of the yeah. monsters on Power Rangers, I get. But being afraid of the Power Rangers? It was specifically, and I remember this now, it was specifically the Power Rangers. You know how, like, back when Disney owned Power Rangers, if you go to, like, Disneyland or Disney World, some nice Power Rangers will walk around in, like, the Disney parks? Um, no, but okay. Oh, did you not go to uh, Disneyland when the Power Rangers were owned by Disney? No, I didn't. Oh, that would explain it. Um, yeah, so when I was there, I went to Disney World, actually, but yeah, they had the Power Rangers there. But for whatever reason, I did not take a picture of the Power Rangers because I thought they were going to kick my ass or something. Because on the TV show, they kick monsters' butts all the time. But for some reason, I thought they went to the Power Rangers, they would beat me up or something. So I would <laughs> never go near them. It was so wow. strange. <laughs> okay, then. Yeah, I have a lot of weird ones. Another one was, um, actually, this one's a little more rational. It was actually bees. I thought about this one in the past, actually. Where, like, how I tried to pet a yellow jacket and I got stung. <laughs> And then I made you scared of all animals with stingers. I've gotten better at it over the years, I think. Especially now, I don't really fear beasts as much as I used to, but man, up until recently, it was pretty bad. I could not even stand being near them. Yeah, Omen is, uh, Omen hates bees and bee-like insects. I, I honestly, I'm not too freaked out by bees, but that's because it's like, it's, they don't really bother me. They don't, they don't fly up to me, they don't crawl on me. Um, wasps and yellow jackets and hornets, you don't see them terribly often out here. I mean, you, I've... Oh my god, you know what I just realized? How many years has it been since I've seen a wasp in San Diego? They used to be a lot more common. I wonder if that's bad. Were they an invasive species, or were they native to the region? Um, they were native. Hmm. I know, maybe, maybe people, when those... I know that people were losing their shit about the bees um, dying off years ago, some years ago, and um, that seems to be a still lurking fear to some people. Um, I don't know. Nobody really talks about that anymore. I know. And the thing is, and I pointed this out then, it's not all the bees. Very, very specific um, species of bees are dying off. And... Most people have, most people, there's enough bee farms where they can be repopulated. It, 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 you guys were making something out of nothing. A mountain out of a molehill. Hey, what do you mean by you guys? I didn't say anything about that. Well, I'm, Actually, when, I'm, you when I'm saying you guys, I'm not referring to you specifically. I'm referring to the people who were, who were, like, saying it was the end of the world. Like, yes, oh, all yeah, bees going extinct would be a very serious problem, but it was blown out of proportion. Absolutely. Uh, do you remember the bee movie from the late 2000s? I do. According to all yeah. known laws of aviation. <laughs> no, I'm not fucking. I'm not doing it. 
Yeah, the bee movie was partially based on that fear, and I can tell because in the scene where they're trying to get all the honey, there's a scene where they had Winnie the Pooh eating honey, and they literally shot Winnie the Pooh. <laughs> oh my god. You don't remember that? I didn't watch it. What? Yeah, I didn't watch the bee movie. Oh, that explains it. Yeah, I saw it one time with my sister and my god brother a couple of years ago. We were like teenagers at the time we were just watching because we were bored we just put the movie on we were it was so so we were laughing our asses off it was like one of the funniest things we ever seen <laughs> well i'm glad you had a good time um yeah honestly i actually don't watch new movies all that often um me neither the last one i saw was like two weeks ago the last movie actually, i went to see weeks. in theaters was sonic the hedgehog 2 was it last year? Yes, it was. And prior to that, it was Sonic the Hedgehog 1. And prior to that, it was that new Rambo movie from back in, like, 2018 or 2019. Mm. Yeah, for me, prior to um, Surprise by Oxford, the last film I had seen in theaters was actually Ant-Man the Wasp Quantumania. No, 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 that's a lie. <laughs> that was the one before that. The last movie I saw in theaters was actually Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse. I can't think of fucking Ant-Man without the Thanos, without the Thanos, without the stupid fucking Thanos memes. You know the ones. Oh, of course, those were so <laughs> big. Like, send you know, you know, send the fucking Ant-Man on Thanos' butt and then make him huge. <laughs> <laughs> no, dude, 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 hold it, hold it. Do you, you don't be crazy, though. Can you imagine we <laughs> in a timeline where they actually waited five years to drop Avengers Endgame? Like, imagine if I could come very out, like, easily year. imagine that being a thing. Yeah, and then they release some movies in the meantime just to fill the time. And then they finally give us, like, the grand finale. Oh, boy. I think people would have been more hyped to see it if it came out this year than, like, when it came out in 2019. I don't know about that, because when you, when you have long gaps between an arc, um, and it, uh, between a, um, a downer ending and the resolution... One of two things can happen. Either, yes, the hype can build, or B, everyone loses interest. And, um... The other problem yeah, with hype kind of like... is that usually hype is a bad thing if you're creating Why something. Why is that? Because the higher yeah. hype gets, the greater the probability that what you're releasing will not live up to the hype. Oh, really? Yeah. I never thought about that. Look at No Man's Sky. That's a great example. Everyone was hyped as fuck for that game, and then it turned out to be uh, that the developers overpromised and underdelivered. Because mm -hmm. here's the well, thing that here's the thing that a lot of people don't know about No Man's Sky. The guy who made that, prior to making that, was making like mobile phone games that were borderline uh, like edutainment tier. <laughs> Yeah. Well, that explains a lot. <laughs> yes, it does. Yeah, wait, wait. Wait, hold on. I got a better example. You know what's a better example of a game that was hyped and didn't deliver? Cyberpunk 2077. Yeah, that's another good one. Um, they were in a game for years. I think a decade that it was in development for. When it finally dropped, it was just a disaster. I mean, unless you had, like, a high-end game PC, that game just did not freaking work. Yeah. I mean, shit. I have... I, I've, I booted up Cyberpunk 2077 couple months back to test if I could stream it. I probably can, actually. But, oomph, my computer is going to be uh, sweating up a storm when I do that. Um, but you know what's another great example of a game that did not live up to its hype? Duke Nukem Forever. Ooh, great one. Although, admittedly, part of that, it, that one is entirely on the developers for trying, if for having to redo the game so many times. I would have been content with a Duke Nukem that played, like, the first Deus Ex. That would have been cool as hell! Yeah, that was the plan, right? Was it supposed to come out in, like, the late 2000s? Yeah. 2000s? Well, it was supposed to come out in the towards the tail end of the early 2000s. Um, I think the original plan was to have it out by, like, 2003 or 2005, somewhere around there. And we got Duke Nukem in, like, 2009... No. 2011, actually. Yeah. After 15 fucking years, it should be. 
<laughs> oh, fuck. I, I will say this, though. At least Duke Nukem tried. At least they tried. Are you familiar with the Postal 3 debacle? What the hell is Postal 3? Okay, so are you familiar? So I take it you're not familiar with the Postal games then? Nope. Okay, you know that game Hatred that came out back in like 2013 or 14? Yeah. Okay, that was basically Postal, but it, Postal actually had good gameplay and, and was well built. Then Postal 2 came out and was basically, I want to say South Park the video game, but that exists. Um, imagine, oh, I got it. Imagine the perfect game to piss off Jack Thompson. Imagine if someone was like, we're going to make a game, and on top of it being a good, playable game, we're going to do everything in our power to piss off Jack Thompson. That is Postal 2. It is a cult classic among the gaming community. Um, Postal 3 happened, and oh boy, that was rough. Um, it had zero effort put into it, it was put out by a second party studio, and it was so god awful and buggy that they actually took it off of their web store. And then they made and then they made an entire expansion pack that was the size of a full game as an apology for that. And then they made Postal 4 to basically retcon Postal 3. The one good Oh, Postal 4 came out like Oh, they came out last year? Yeah, it was an early access since like I think 2020. Um, and, or, my, yeah, it was definitely 2020. And you know why I know this? Because they're making fun of the coronavirus in, in Postal 4. Ah. Oh, if I remember funny. correctly, there's actually a bit where you buy things with toilet paper. Yeah, um. Oh, that's really fascinating. Yeah, and Postal's, uh, inter another interesting bit about the Postal series, uh, it is one of the movies that got adapted by Uwe Boll. Are you familiar with him? Is that the guy who did the Resident Evil movies? No, that is, um, God, what's his name? It's not Uwe Boll, though. Uwe Boll did House of the Dead, he did, um, Postal, he did, um, Alone in the Dark, and I think he did... What was it? But he's a German film director who was notoriously bad at making video game adaptation or movie adaptations of video games. And he would actually challenge his critics to fights in a fucking ring. Um, some actually <laughs> followed through on that and went against him. And he did whoop their asses. But you know what? That doesn't make him any better of a film director. Of course not. <laughs> Yeah, I kind of feel the time that, like, somebody tried to, like, challenge Matt Walsh to, like, a boxing match, and if he won, he wouldn't release what is a win. But by the time he made the challenge, the film had already released, so it's like, eh, it already happened, but you kind of wait there. So, wait, what the heck were we? Why are we talking about movies all of a sudden? <laughs> we went from... We went from childhood fears to video games to movies somehow. I mean, this is this is our most freeform podcast. It's kind of, it's kind of to be expected, though. I know this podcast is just a meme, but I love it. I know it is a very elaborate shit post, but it is the be but you know it's fun. Where's this shit post? Have you seen our intro? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, our our uh, our usual intro, not the Halloween based ones, but yeah. It, it's it's literally just the fucking to be continued meme from fucking JoJo. <laughs> I wonder. You know what? It just occurred to me. Have there been any JoJo video games that aren't fighting oh, games that are not fighting games? Oh, okay. That's an interesting question. Um, none that I can think. Of. I'm gonna Google that now. Because the earliest JoJo game I can think of was the one that Capcom did in the late 90s. Oh, there is... 
there is one RPG Maker game, and it's absolute ass. Actually, now that you mention that, there, oh wait, no, I remember. There was, an, there was in fact an RPG based on Part 3 that came out on the Super Nintendo in the early 90s. List of JoJo's an RPG are adventure game. In video games. Um... Okay, yeah. No, the one I was thinking of is called JoJo's Bizarre Adventure The Seventh Stand, and it is notorious for being shit. Oh, yeah, not that one. That's not the one I was talking about. Um... No, I, from that one was actually pretty good. I think I was thinking it localized was because JoJo wasn't super big back then. I don't think the OVA had released in the West yet, so... Um, yeah, that would explain that. that. You know what I would love to see a video game of get localized? I want a Super Robot Wars where Big O is in it and it's and it gets localized, damn it. Because uh, Big O has appeared in Super Robot Wars on several occasions, but all of those games were Jap Japanese exclusives. Yeah, I can see what you mean. Um, you know what's sad about JoJo, though? When people think of JoJo, the, the first thing they think of is freaking JoJo Siwa. JoJo Siwa? Yeah, she's that kid. She was uh, she was uh, she was known for being on Dance Mom. She was one of the little girls that would dance at Dance Mom. She's doing her own thing now, and um, I don't know. It's kind of lame, but uh, yeah, that's what people tend to think of first. See, whenever first I, I hear JoJo, I start thinking of that fucking song Ocean Man. <laughs> Have you seen that video where someone made like took PNGs of Johnny, Giorno, Jotaro, and they're in the desert? And um, like like when you, Rini, and Omen appear in the TARDIS, they actually light up as they're talking. So um, you can tell it was done via Discord and like sh and backgrounds. It's a very elaborate shit post, but um, it ends with all three of them singing "Fucking Ocean Man" around a campfire. <laughs> Yeah. Um, oh, yeah, okay, so basically the the RPG I'm talking about was literally called JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. That was actually the first JoJo game. Well, I mean, with it being the first game, it makes sense they wouldn't have a very creative title. <laughs> yeah, um, after that was the Capcom fighting game. Then there was GeoGeo's Bizarre Adventure. This is the one based on Part 5, because based on Giorno Giovanna. Uh... Uh, this one was actually an event action adventure game. And then after that, we got a, a beat em up for the PS2 called JoJo's Bizarre Adventure Phantom Blood. This is based on part one, hence the subtitle. After that was All Star Battle, the fighting game. Then Star the Shooters, which is a metal shooting action game. Wow. For iOS and Android. That's interesting. Um, then another fighting game, an action game, also for mobile. A matching puzzle game, also mobile. A battle royale game in. Oh, Last Survivor was this one. I, I remember that one. Um, and then some Chinese title. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that's basic. Yeah, I've, um... Admittedly, I would probably play an action-adventure game that was JoJo-centered, but, like, Giorno, I have, I have zero interest in as a character. Then yeah, again, I've only seen... Well, I mean, I've only seen up to part three is the problem. Oh, you never saw parts four onward? No, uh, they weren't localized at the time of me watching. Well, they are now. <laughs> are they? Uh, okay. Shit. Um, yeah, because I had... They've been localized for a while, dude. <laughs> Alright, I'm gonna have to fix that in the near future, then. Uh, wait. Hmm. Because I just realized I was used... I was watching those on Netflix. And I'm not about to start paying Netflix money again. You want to go to Crunchyroll? I mean, I'd rather not, but if that is literally the only option, I guess I'll do it. <laughs> no, I'm sure there's other ways to get it. If I, actually, I think you could get it on physical media, just buy through Amazon. I'm, they just play in, like, yeah, a jewelry player. Yeah, you know what, you're probably right. Um, Amazon sells fucking everything. You can buy the classic series Doctor Who on DVD from Amazon now. Yeah, you can find entire book series, entire anything. You really can't find anything on Amazon. If you can think of something, it's probably on there. Yeah. Okay, so... Oh my god, you know what's funny? We've only been at this for about an hour now. 
Actually, less than an hour, dude, my dude. Are you sure? It says here 59.28. Oh, I'm getting 49.17. Oh, that's because of the freaking, um, what you call it, the connection drop that we had earlier. Oh, that's why. Okay, so it looks like it has been only an hour. Yeah, it's only like it's not even 9 o'clock where I'm at. So yeah, we can keep going. Um. In that case, let's circle back to the main topic, childhood fears. Yeah. Um. Let's see. Ooh, oh. This is a deep, like, can we do like? You know what? What? Let's veer from scary. Let's get. Let's uh, let's shift from childhood fears to scary scenes in movies that aren't ne that aren't horror movies. Um, have you ever seen the movie Braveheart? No. Wow, okay. We're gonna have to fix that at some point. Um, because, yeah, in the, early on in the film, when, um, William Wallace, a.k.a. Braveheart, is just a boy, he has a nightmare about his father's death. Um, he goes into, he goes to their old house and it's just all bodies hanging from nooses from the rafters. And, um, Whoa. yeah, that scene, it's actually a very touching scene, despite how morbid it starts. Because you know why? Um, his, his, his dad, he, in the dream, he finds his dad hanging there and his dad starts talking to him, basically saying, hey, look, son. I've passed before you became a man. You're going to have to learn to become a man now from your uncle. Respect him and grow into a good man like I was. Um, so, yeah, it's like it's complete tonal fucking whiplash. But it's like that that scene scared the absolute bejesus out of me when I first watched it at the age of like six or seven. Oh, I can see why. Yeah. Um, ooh, for me, a scary scene from a non horror movie is actually... Um, was actually Dr. Octopus's intro in Spider-Man 2, specifically the scene where he becomes, like, Dr. Octopus. Um, they're oh, actually trying yeah. to surgically remove the arms from his body, but basically, arms become sentient, and they start attacking and killing all the scientists there, like, all the surgeons there. And, like, by the time he wakes up, they're all dead. He just leaves. It was wild. Yeah, I remember that scene. Um, there's two scenes I remember from Spider-Man 2. One is that one, and the other is Dr. Octopus's death at the end of the film. Oh, that's iconic. Yeah, where he's just floating there in the water, and you see that uh, you, you see him sitting there with his eyes still open. Oh, that's creepy. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, given that it's the same guy did the Evil Dead movies, I really should be all that surprised. Honestly. Oh my god. <laughs> okay. Um. <laughs> fuck. You didn't know that? No. Wait. So you're telling me Sam Raimi directed the Evil Dead movies? Yes. Okay, wow, I did not know that. He created the series, dude. I didn't know that. I've seen Evil Dead 1. Well, half of it. I have Evil Dead yeah, it 2 and 3 on my computer, I just need to watch them. Yeah, with Evil Dead, it started off as just a regular horror series, but then it deviates a horror comedy, and that's when it got really fun and creative. Oh, yeah, I fucking love the Evil Dead films. Um, me and my... You know what's funny? I just remembered, there's Evil Dead video games out there. Unfortunately, sure there only are. one of them is good. Actually, I'm not sure what's more impressive. The fact that Evil Dead exists, the Evil Dead video games exist, or the fact that one of them is good. Because usually licensed video games are ass. Yeah, that's part of the reason why, prior to Arkham Asylum, most superhero games were seen as, like, cheap... Well, most of them were cheap movie tie-ins for the longest time. That's part of the reason why they stink so much. Yeah. And, um... And <laughs> then re have that you ever seen the uh, video of the PS2 Spider-Man game where some dude is deliberately failing the uh, quick time events and Spider-Man just lands on the fucking floor before the bomb goes off? Actually, that was Spider-Man 3. Was that? Oh my god. Yeah, that, was the that game's graphics that was were the awful. That game was on the PS... That was a PS3 and 360 title. Oh my god! I never would have guessed. Oh my god. 
Well, I'm not surprised. The game was rushed as hell to get out on time. The guys had no experience with HD consoles, so that's how I got that abomination. Everything looked untextured. I had, I had assumed it was PS1. <laughs> oh no, my god. The PS2 version actually looked better than the PS3 version. <laughs> god. Oh, shit. Um... Oh god, what's another horror scene from a non-horror movie? Um... Ooh, I got it. How about the scene in X2 where Wolverine is like, fight, actually... Not that, actually. Never mind. Um, I was gonna say, I actually have never seen any of the X-Men films. Oh, really? Yeah, I haven't even seen any of the standalone Wolverine movies. You know what's crazy though, because I mean, for Deadpool 3, I've been hearing that like they're based out to kill off the Fox universe. Like all the X Men, Fantastic Four characters that were made by Fox are gonna kill them all off in Deadpool 3. I don't know how, but they're gonna do it, and um, that'll be quite interesting. Uh, but thankfully, actually, you know what else I've heard though? I heard that like after Secret Wars, they are gonna reboot the MCU. That's either very good or very bad. <laughs> Because well, Kevin Feige was actually interviewed about this, and what he said was it's more of a soft reboot where they're going to keep the stuff that works, but they're mainly going to focus on getting rid of stuff that didn't work. So any IPs or franchises that did not do well in the box office or failed in Disney+, Plus, those are probably going to go away. But anything that's good, that was successful, that's going to stay. And they'll also give them a chance to bring back characters who were killed off like Iron Man Captain America. So when this new MCU shows up, it'll be closer to the current state of the comics where you got your core lineup of heroes in their prime doing their thing. Well, that's cool. Yeah, because I was going to say, with the material, if they're, um, if they're rebooting and they're doing, and they're adapting from all new, all different, they are just going to lose so much money. <laughs> they're already doing that to a lesser extent, and they are losing money. That's the thing, though. <laughs> fucking Ironheart, America Chavez, um, fucking... Dude, they're Thor. still doing the Ironheart show. It just got delayed indefinitely, from what I've heard. Then they're not doing I it anymore. To... If it's been indefinitely delayed, that means it's not happening. Thank goodness. A lot of those, because there were a lot of TV, especially the TV shows. A lot of them were just really dumb ideas. Like, why is this show? Why not give us like characters we actually care about? But anyways, I know, right? A lot of those are going to make the wait die. Um, Armor Wars actually was supposed to be a TV show. That's now a movie, so that's interesting. And. um... I'm really curious to see how Phase 6 is going to go. Phase 5, we're kind of, like, halfway there. It's supposed to wrap up by, like, the end of next year. Uh, and then after that, it's the final phase of the Multiverse Saga. That leads to um, Kang Dynasty and Secret Wars. So, we'll see how that all plays out. Oh, I just remembered a non-horror... Uh, uh, I just remembered another horror scene from a non-horror movie. And it kind of ties back to childhood fear. Have you ever seen the movie Polar Express? Yes. Okay, so do you remember the to the car with all the broken toys? That one scene? Yeah. With the Scrooge puppet? What about it? Um, yeah. I don't know why, but that and the mysterious dude from the top of the train who was, like, made out of snow spooked the shit out of me as a kid when I watched that movie. I, would, I actually had nightmares about that. <laughs> Imagine that, a kid having nightmares on Christmas Eve. <laughs> yeah. Sounds like something Krumpus would do. Krumpus, yeah. <laughs> oh man, I uh, you know there's been, there's been a lot there are a lot of interpretations of Krampus uh, throughout history. My favorite though, my favorite adaptation of the Krampus myth, um, prior to this week was the American Dad interpretation, where he's just an where he's just a um, annoying he's just a grumpy dude who beats people in the legs with a stick. <laughs> <laughs> He's just a fucking dick. Uh, I actually re I was actually listening to the uh, Doctor Who audio stories on my phone on um, Friday night while I was playing Pirates of the Caribbean. I, did, I I just I just listened to those doing whatever, and um, they fucking tied a holiday special into the event box set of all things. Dude, imagine if Marvel was doing, like, an event run of comics, and just in the middle, smack dab in the middle, before the series villain even was introduced, they had a fucking Christmas episode that was, like, three comics long. 
<laughs> That's what this was. And essentially, they uh, this little girl lost her dad because he threw himself off a bridge from the stress of their landlord raising the rent and not being able to pay it. And she couldn't wish her dad back because, uh, because of the rules that this reality-warping alien had. So she wished that the Krampus was real, and fucking everyone got dragged off by the Krampus' imps to hell. And including the doctor, so the doctor's friend actually had to spend like years of her life learning to fly the TARDIS. And guess what her solution is? What's that? Her solution is, I'm go uh, going to Asia Minor in the 4th century to get Saint Nicholas, yes, the real fucking saint who falcon punched a dude for spewing heresy at the Council of Nicaea, that Saint Nicholas, and get him to tell Krampus to let everybody go. <laughs> and the hell of it is it fucking worked. <laughs> that, is, that is by far my favorite Doctor Who audio story now. <laughs> Although I am slightly disappointed that that same St. Nicholas did not show up in the uh, Council of Nicaea story, historical, that, Doctor Who, that the Doctor Who audios did. Oh, that's really weird. I know, right? Especially because it came out... Well, actually, I think I know why. The Council of Nicaea story came out well and before, um, this, uh, before this Krampus story did. Um, I think that the Council of Nicaea started it was um oh my god it might have been in like 95 or 96 because for a while big finish was actually the only place that was doing uh up-to-date doctor who episodes and the eighth doctor the reason that he has so many audio stories is he was the current doctor between the tv movie and the series revival and so big finish is like yeah we got this license to make doctor who stories let's do this um, yeah, they had, like, no competition. <laughs> yeah, and so... But, like, Council of Nicaea was one of the fifth Doctor stories that they did when they g had just gotten the license, so... I think that's why they didn't have... Uh, why they didn't have that plot point put in there. Plus, admittedly, it wouldn't have been relevant to the plot. A lot of the Council of Nicaea episode um, centers around the Doctor's companions and the Doctor interacting with Constantine, Arius, and the bishops. Um, and... I remember reviewing this once before, and Constantine is less of a dick than I remember, because I actually re-listened to that, um, couple weeks back. I'm actually kind of jarred by how unfavorably it views the bishops that, ca that cast out Arius. The, the, the store, the Council of Nicaea audio drama actually was very sympathetic to Arius, and very unsympathetic to the bishops. It has a pretty balanced take on Constantine, though. He's basically a, like in real life, he's a dude who is trying to keep together the Empire and help the Church, like, come together because he knows that not, that they won't be able to survive if they don't. And if that means using force, so be it, but he'd rather everyone sort things out themselves. Fair enough. But yeah, it almost paints the bishops um, in the Council as being corrupt assholes, which... I wasn't there, but I don't think that's how it went down. No, I doubt it. <laughs> Although there is a bit of humor in the end. In the final scene, as the doctor's taking off, um, Arius is going to is like looking for them to thank them, and he sees the TARDIS disappearing, and he's like, "How did I not see it sooner? Thank you, Lord, for sending your angels to help me." Because he assumed that he was going to get, like, killed. Um, because there were there were lynch mobs, like, as the council, during the council was meeting. Instead, what ended up happening is, as in real life, he got exiled. <laughs> yeah, interesting. Yeah. Wow, this is, like, the least... I want... This is definitely the least focus of all of our podcast episodes, I think. Yeah, we went off topic a long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> it's to be continued. It's 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 supposed to do that. It's fine. Yeah, that makes perfect sense. <laughs> yeah. Um, actually, there was another childhood fear that just came to my attention. Um, what was it? It actually was it childhood fear. 
not maybe more of a teenage thing. The, uh, so by child of fear, does it mean specifically when we were children, or does it still count as long as we're not like 18 when it happened? I'd say, I'd say as long as um, as long as you're not 18 when it happens, go for it. Okay, so um, basically, when I was in high school, there were actually two girls who had a crush on me. And I know they had a crush on me because they were un they were both unusually very nice to me in a way most women I knew weren't. Uh, I'll start backwards until this story makes sense. The second one was the girl who I turned down because she had braces. <laughs> Bruh. I think I talked about her in the past. As someone who had to grow up with braces, that's a low blow, my dude. <laughs> <laughs> you know what's funny, though? Of the three kids in my family, I was the only one who never got braces, like, at any point in their life. My older sister had it, and my younger sister had it. I never did. Did you just have, like, good teeth? Yeah, I got my father's side. My sister's got my mom's teeth because my mom has an overbite and they inherited that from her I got my dad's teeth who were a lot more even so they never got that way oh, also man. I have some like um what you might call it with some wisdom teeth in the back but they just never got to the point where they hurt so they're just sitting there doing their thing so I never think get those removed lucky bastard I um <laughs> when I was in middle school I actually had to get my wisdom teeth surgically removed because they were coming in crooked. Now, they didn't hurt, but I'm like, eh, eh, but the uh, surgery, I had eight freaking teeth removed in one surgery. Hey, I thought they only did four. No. What the hell happened? Eight. <laughs> Wait, have I Did it, like, grow inside? I don't think you shared the story. What happened? Did it, like, grow inside of another tooth? Like, what was going on? Uh, yes, actually. Oh, shit. Do well, more more I've like under, it. out from under. I had uh, I had four wi I had like eight wisdom teeth that I had removed, uh, or no, I think I had four wisdom teeth removed, and I had four regular teeth removed. Um, all of them are from the back, so I'm missing like one. Yeah, that's still empty. Two. Cool. Are you four. putting your fingers in your mouth? Yes, I was counting. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> I was going to say, what are you, seven? <laughs> no. <laughs> um, so yeah, I am missing like four molars. Two on the top and two on the bottom, toward all, all at the back. Um, and then oh, I had four shit. wisdom teeth. I had all four of my wisdom teeth extracted. Um, Bro, how do you chew your meat? Like anyone else, I use my canines and my molars that are still there. Okay, fair, but like, you said your molars were removed, so... Not I all of my molars, just four. Two on the top and two on the bottom, and they're bu and all of them are from the back. So I just have... It, it, my mouth, my, I can function like that, it's completely fine. Okay, okay. I didn't know there was more than four molars, though. I thought that was the four in the back were it. No, no, you have, um, like, one, two, three... I have three molars on my top left and three molars on my top right. So then three mo So I have 12 molars. I have 12 molars in total right now, post-surgery. I would have had 14... No. It'd be 16, right? 16, yeah. I'd have 16 in total if I had never had the wisdom tooth issue. Oh, okay. That okay, never mind. I know you have more than four. Um, because I have I have sixteen as well, actually, so that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. But um You know what's funny though? I'm actually missing a wisdom tooth. But like I never got it removed, I just was born without it. Like I only have like I think three or two, I can't quite remember. Yeah, I've um Part of the reason I had braces, though, is I had a, a, an overbite as well. And I had a really shit overbite. You know what I had? I had fucking squirrel teeth. Oh, no. Oh, <laughs> yes. Like, teeth? Yes. <laughs> oh, man. In, no, in, all the pictures, had... in all the pictures of young Seth, um, I am wearing... I am Assuming that I am not a baby, I am wearing glasses, and I have two buck teeth right in the middle... Like I'm a fucking squirrel or a fucking chipmunk. 
I am... I didn't like having braces. It meant I couldn't eat apple. I had to be very careful about eating apples, and I couldn't. And I had to be very ca careful about how I ate popcorn. Um, the do the dentist said, "No, don't eat those." I'm like, "Yeah, no, I'm I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna do it anyway." And oh, um, mom was not happy about it, but she realized she really couldn't stop me <laughs> because I was already such a picky eater. She's like, "You know what? Fine, you can eat the apples." I'll you can eat the popcorn too. Just you better not be fucking breaking those braces. And I'm like, don't worry, I'll chew slowly. And um, that strategy worked. Conversely, my brother, who was supposed to have braces and wear them, he would deliberately fuck them up. And mom just said, all right, you know what? You've wasted this much of my money. I'm not doing it. You get to have fucked up teeth. It's your decision. And now as he's an adult, he's like, oh, fuck, I shot myself in the dick doing that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, to be fair, he could just get a braces now if he wanted to. The, uh, yeah, but that'd be like, I, I don't think he has the money for that sort of thing. Because braces are expensive. Oh, uh, yeah, I would imagine. All right, where was I? Oh yes, um, about the bulldog tooth thing. Um, that's kind of interesting. I had to happen. My nephew, my eldest nephew, was interesting. He was one of those kids that had like a gap in his teeth. So like where his where his two front teeth were, there was just a giant hole in the middle, and the braces basically sealed that hole. Oh jeez. Yeah, it, he was the only kid I knew of that had that. Like. No one else in our family had that kind of thing. It was quite fascinating. Yeah, that's... I mean, it's... It's good that, you know, you got that taken care of. Because I've... Apparently, if your teeth get, like, too crooked or out of alignment, it can really cause problems later down the line. Like the British? <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yeah, the British Imperial have really fucked up teeth from what I've heard. Right, but I was more Especially talking about how, people. like, um... Apparently the way you chew your food can be affected, and that can actually affect, like, other things. I, 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 don't, I don't know the details. I just remember reading somewhere that, like, if you don't get your teeth fixed, it can lead to health problems. Mm. You know what? Now that you bring that up, this kind of reminds me of an old comment section episode I saw a few months ago. I think it was back in July, where... Um, I was going over why people today seem less physically attractive than those back then. Yeah, I saw that in my recommended. Like Are we getting uglier? <laughs> no, I think it's more so. Like, a lot of that has to do with, like, the, the changes we have to our diet and our exercise. So a lot of it was mainly just health issues we making. Part of it could be biology in the sense that, like, testosterone has been going down on average. And, like, we were getting puberty earlier, but nobody knows why. But that we're still looking into, but it has known that the, our diet and our exercise have changed dramatically. Like we become a lot more sedated, we're sitting down a lot more for work, we're not sedentary. Um, going outside as much, yeah. Uh, and you, also not going dude, outside you, as often. You, you said sedative. You, that's, that's, that's a medication that puts you under, my guy. You're thinking of the word sedentary. <laughs> oh, oh, oops. <laughs> That's not good. Yeah. Uh, I'm sorry, that's not what to say at all. No, I've met uh, the one you're sitting in the office, so people are not going outside this often. Also, the way we're chewing our food has changed. Because back then, um, people, you know, people had a lot of, like, especially men, they have very square jaws. Yes. Nobody really has any more because the foods we've eaten have gotten softer. So some of our muscles in our mouth are not being used. So our faces just stay kind of soft. You know what's funny about that? I actually had a square jaw for a very long time. Um, I still do, it's just buried under layers of fat, so you can't see it that well. Mm. Um, I am thinning out, though. I have, I have hit 240. You know how for a while I plateaued at, like, 245? Woo! Yeah. Next stop, 230. And if I can, if I hit 228 again, I'm like, ooh, I'll be right where I was back at the peak of my fitness quest. Nice. Yeah, right now I'm at, like, 210 or 211. And that's 30 pounds below I was last year, so... And you're only four pounds, uh, in... you're only four pounds under Donald Trump there. No, 
nice. Yeah, I, I, when I first heard, when I first heard the news that his weight was 214, I'm like, oh, for fuck's sakes, I'm fatter than Trump. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> well, the good thing is, you're, I think you're on par with Matt Walsh in terms of height, so you have that going. That's true. There's no way in fuck that Trump is 6'3". I don't care what the mugshot says, I don't buy that. I could believe that Trump lost a shit ton of weight because of all the stress between the political nonsense and the uh, legal nonsense. That I could buy. I, I've lost, like, five, I've lost, like, eight pounds from, like, just starting my new job on top of my work and um, the stress of all that. And being more active, because I am going out to do photographs for my work. Um, but I do not buy for a nanosecond that Trump is 6'3". That's as tall as no, Omen. That... No fucking way. <laughs> no. That's like saying, like, that's like how Ben Shapiro thinks he's like 5'9", when he's clearly 5'7". Like, no, dude. <laughs> You're literally short than Fred Cooper, and she's 5'8". I thought that, I, I'm not gonna lie, I thought that Ben Shapiro was like 5'5". Five, five. <laughs> Maybe Honestly, that would. <laughs> Maybe I was thinking five, that, three. but like he, because I saw a picture with her and Bre with him and Brett together. And she was like, I think, about an inch taller than him, like just, I, I, or maybe like half an inch, so they're close, but she's clearly the taller of the two. And she's on par with Michael, they're around the same height. Obviously, she's shorter than Matt Walsh, because again, he's six foot two, but like she's taller than Ben. And like, if you're shorter than Brett Cooper, you are not five and nine. I'm sorry to say that. Actually, you know what's funny about people I've noticed is that you could tell how, tell people's weight from just looking at them online, but you can't tell their height. I yeah. feel like the height, you need to like see someone in person to see how tall they really are. Because someone could say like, oh, I'm six foot two, but you're not going to really know for sure unless you see them in person. Although, you can't always tell someone's weight from how they, from their online picture. Um, I am oh, one yeah, of those people where I have been. the... I have this problem where a lot, um, I, I store most of my weight in my face and in my gut. So, even if I'm only slightly out of shape, my facial structure will change dramatically. <laughs> mm. um, yeah, I'm kind of the same way too, where like most of the weight's in my stomach and my face, but my arms and legs are fairly thin. I forget, how tall are you, Rick? I am 5 foot 9. Okay. I don't know what the uh, fit, what the what the uh, peak BMI for someone who's five nine is. Um, I do know that for me, a man in my late twenties uh, who's six three or no six two, um, according to the U.S. Marines, peak physical condition is between two hundred and eighty and two hundred and eighty five pounds. Um, since I'm not in the military, I could probably get away with just being down at two hundred. Any more than that, though, and I'm like, gross. Yeah, you'd be, you don't want to be, like, twiggy. Well, no, I'm saying, like, any heavier than 200 pounds. Oh! Okay. I was very, I thought you meant, like, lot less than 200. Honestly, if I got, like, actually, no, that probably wouldn't be a good thing. Um, I was underweight when I was in high school. <laughs> actually, I was underweight oh, when yeah. I was a kid. What? What, did you just have, like, ketchup sandwiches for breakfast? No, I just had a very fast metabolism. I was I, I, I was natural I, I naturally burned off calories. Um, I think I might have told you about this. We had a doctor examine me when my mom was in grad school and he's like, Yeah, this kid is underweight by a concerning measure. You gotta you gotta he's gotta get heavier. And so mom's solution was, Okay, Seth, you're eating cheesecake for breakfast. I'm like Fuck yeah! <laughs> awesome! Let's fucking go! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I fucking love cheesecake. It is one of the best desserts out there. I can never well, decide phenomenal. if I like cheesecake, creme brulee, or cream puffs more. I am I have a sweet tooth. I, I, I definitely have a sweet tooth. It's just that I don't like... It's like My sweet tooth is kind of uh, specific. Like, candy's all well and good. But I like, like, um, confectionery type stuff better. Ooh. So are you, like, a chocolate guy? Yeah, I like chocolate every now and then. Um, I, if I eat chocolate, it's like, it's like, um, candy bar or maybe, uh, Halloween candy type stuff. But, no, the kind, I, I would, I would put down a chocolate bar if it meant that I got a piece of, like, cheesecake 
or cream puffs or some creme brulee or like a baked dessert kind of deal going on. Mm. Have you ever been to Cheesecake Factory? I have once, and it was great. They make great food there. They do. I always try to. I always intentionally eat less over there, so I have space for dessert. Because come on, you gotta have the cheesecake when you're over there. You just have to. Also, when you're getting cheese. Okay, do you just get like the regular cheesecake or do you get one of those specialty cheesecake like the chocolate ones or the strawberry ones? Or I usually like do I usually do the regular, though if they have the option for a caramel flavored cheesecake, I will get that. Ooh, that sounds nice. Yeah, I've only found like maybe one or two places that serve it. Cheesecake Factory being one, and I'm trying to remember the name of the other one that does it. It escapes me at the moment. I'm probably gonna remember it like nine at night and be like, oh that's what it was. All right, well, we've been at this for about an hour and a half. Uh, you want to wrap it up here? Sure, we can wrap it up. I can't think of anything else, so let's end it here. All right, and the next weekend, let, uh, um, I know you don't do horror movies, so instead we will do a horror game terror list. Ooh, neat. So yeah, that's going to be on... To Be Continued going forward is going to be on Sunday afternoon after Branch Brothers due to uh, my due to my ever grow uh, my ever more demanding schedule. Um, if, when I graduate from trade school, we will re-examine the schedule again then. Uh, yeah, of course. And um, also, to be clear, I have a couple more announcements to make first. Um, are we still doing Dragon Quest on Wednesday? Yes. Is that still happening? Yes, we are. Okay. So stay tuned at this time, um, 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific, for the next Dragon Six Quest. 6 Pacific, my dude. Well oh, Pacific? Yeah. yeah. That's what I said. No, you said 5 Pacific. We bumped it up to 6 Pacific because I get off of work at, um, at 5 p.m. on Wednesday nights now. Oh, that's right. So it'd be 6 Pacific. That'd be, oh, 9 Eastern. Okay, my bad then. All right. Yeah. All right, so then we're going to be doing then, and then to, on Tuesday, I'll be making a, another special guest appearance on the Dale Wire Friends podcast that starts um, 9 Eastern, 6 Pacific. So if you're interested, head you can head to either YouTube, Rumble, or Twitter. I will be on that show, and you will see my face again. Cool. I might tune in there myself, assuming that I have the ability, assuming that uh, my schedule allows it. Um... If not, I'll probably watch it after it's um, after the fact later. All right, All right everybody, cool. well, let us find someone to raid.